Welcome, this is Information Service Engineering lecture number 12 and this is our notebook for basic neural network applications. So we have compiled to you a really, really small application based on a neural network and you will see how to train that. And this is based on the Keras library together with the scikit-learn library. And we need a few more libraries like pandas and matplot <coughs> simply to get a bit more insight in the data. Okay. Prerequisites. If you want to play around with that notebook, so simply save your own copy, then you can change everything you want. And most importantly, since <clears throat> here we are dealing with a neural network, training of neural network, you should switch on the GPU of, of course, the GPU support of that notebook. You do this going to the edit um, menu and there you have notebook settings. You find this here, notebook settings, and then you have to make sure that here your GPU <coughs> support is activated. Okay, so you might remember that we, when we did decision trees, we had this weather forecast problem and we will use exactly the same data, but now we want to use all of the data instead of only a few features that we have pre-selected. And another thing we want to find out is we want to see if we are able with neural networks to achieve a better result compared to our random forest, which was able to achieve a F1 score of 64.45%. Okay, so let's start. First, we have to load some libraries. So we need scikit-learn helper functions like, for example, again, training test split or accuracy score, confusion matrix. You know this already from the last lectures. The data is read in, into a pandas PD, um, you know, um, data structure because this is then used for easy visualization. And this is new here. We are going to use, excuse me, we are going to use the Keras uh, library and there we will need sequential models for our networks and we will create it layer by layer. And here we use this for creating a dense layer. You can look up what this exactly means then in the documentation for the Keras library, which is linked over there also in the notebook. Okay, and you know already that we are able to plot something. We will use matplotlib for example, and we will use Seaborn again for our correlation um, heat map. Okay, um, for the confusion matrix, we have here a little helper function that plots the confusion uh, matrix in form of a heat map. You also know this from the last lecture. So we do very first the import, then we define here our helper function for the heat map, and then we are going to load our weather observation data. This is available here, you see here from GitHub, and we simply read it from GitHub into a pandas CSV structure. So the data is uh, organized as CSV as comma separated values. And um, we will look at the first five rows here by looking at the header. And again, you see you have here interesting temperature data, min minimum temperature, maximum temperature, rainfall, evaporation, and so on and so on and so on. So lots of stuff. And we are interested in whether it rains tomorrow or not. And um, of course, this is what we want to predict in the end. So to get an overview again over the features, we plotting a heat map here with a Seaborn library and we put um, the heat map and we take the weather correlation here. And um, of course, we say here we, we take a specific color map. And of course, we want to see then how our 20 by 20 sized heat map will look like. This is our heat map. You know this also from the last Collab notebook. And you see here, for example, um, this is the feature sunshine and you have another feature. And we are interested in the correlations of the feature rain tomorrow with all of the other features. And you see we have a few which have a high negative or a high positive correlation indicated by red or by the green number. However, this time we also want to take into account all the other features we have here that haven't been considered beforehand. Okay. Next thing what we want to do, we split this data into two data sets that we have an X data set with all of the features and the Y data set with the results we want to achieve, whether it rains tomorrow or not. This means we drop first for X from the weather data structure, pandas data structure, the column rain tomorrow, and Y will be only the column rain tomorrow. So looking at the shape of those, we see we have 56,000 rows. And of course here X has 26 columns then and Y has just one column. Okay, 
Next thing we do, is we do a training test split of the ratio 75-25%. So here we say X train, um, X test, Y train, Y test. This will be assigned by the train test split and we feed in there X as our you know, features, Y as our results. And we say the test size should be 0 0.25. And we do this and you see then there, okay, we have a training size this is 75 percent of the data and we have a test size 40,000 this is 25 percent of the data okay now comes the important part we are training our neural network first we have to compose a neural network so the network here that we use from the keras library is called sequential and we will train one hidden layer of 26 neurons why 26 neurons yes we have 26 inputs so therefore our hidden layer has the same number of neurons and then we say okay we simply converge to one single neuron in the output layer so this is what we are going to do look at the code box here so we define our model this is uh, of course a sequential model here and then we define first the first hidden layer it will be a dense layer of course 26 um, is the dimension so the input dimension is 26 and we have 26 neurons and the activation function we use here is the relu function so this is a very simple um, linear function for activation and then we do our output layer again dense with this we create an output layer we have only one neuron here and the activation function here then is a sigmoid function which will be of course a nonlinear function then we compile our model so putting things together we are using a specific loss function here it's the binary cross entropy function we use a specific optimizer out of the box you can read it up in the documentation and as accuracy metrics we want to see accuracy uh, as metrics we want to see accuracy okay now starts the training and i assign all of this data into history of course training is then i want to fit my model with the training data and of course i also have the results for my training data the predefined labels um, i specify a number of echo epochs this is completely arbitrary i have chosen here 200 epochs and a batch size of 250 batch size is of course this is the cycle how long does it take to um, update uh, the gradient then in the end and of course the larger the batch size the less updates are made and this of course has influence on runtime but then also on uh, the accuracy in the end and we do a validation split of 20 percent validation then also for our training what I did here, I abbreviated and pre-computed here this box already because this starts, you know, to train each single epoch. And you see here for each epoch, it, it gives you what is the loss function, what is the achieved accuracy on the training data and what is the loss on the validation data and the accuracy that we have achieved on the, accu uh, on the validation data. So we do this 200 times. This needs a few minutes then in the end. And um, you will see up here in the end on the training data set, we achieve a rather low loss of 0.05 in an accuracy of almost 99%, which is rather high. Also the validation set has an accuracy of 96%. Okay, now let's evaluate that on our test data. So here I do model evaluate and I give as parameters X and Y, so the labels and of course the parameters of my test data set and i do this simply again and you see here the accuracy computes to 96 percent which is rather high okay like in the case of the decision tree we want to get a bit further insights and compute also precision recall and f1 and you see here precision is 85 percent recall is really high 99.5 percent and this computes to an f1 measure to 91 percent so looking at our confusion matrix, you see already, yeah, we only have small errors. So here again, so rain is wrongly, also no rain is wrongly predicted 14 times and rain is wrongly predicted 500 times out of here, 40,000 cases that we have there. So this is already rather high. For further insights in training quality, um, you can look at visualizing, for example, training and validation accuracy that you had as a number here, as well as training and validation loss over the training epochs. And you can do this and visualize this and you see then here, so this is training and validation accuracy. You see this of course uh, is getting bigger with the number of epochs. Of course, we have a few here um, in, in the validation accuracy. Sometimes we have a hiccup, 
as we see here so it's far from perfect now and this is the training and validation loss which starts higher and then is immediately rather smaller so probably we wouldn't have need as many epochs to train here so try out other you know network uh, architectures try out other kind of let's say uh, training epochs and batch sizes and you will see how this will work on your data but be aware this definitely is better than the random forest as you have seen here but this is already you know a deep network because we have a hidden layer there okay so this was our notebook on neural networks we will continue the lecture then later on with word embeddings